Alright guys, welcome back to my top 10 favorite Sith Lords, and yeah, um, hope you all enjoyed the first part, and uh, once again, this is just my list, uh, if you think a character should be higher or lower on this list or not at all, that's totally fine, no ill will against you, these are just my top 10 personal favorite Sith Lords in general. Uh, if you uh, if you think it should be different, that's totally fine. This is just my opinion. I'm not saying these are the definitive favorite Sith Lords. I'm always excited to know, uh, to know who are yours. That's why I kind of do these top ten lists. So, uh, if you haven't seen the first half already, just go back to the other video, and uh, to the previous video, and uh, yeah, see ten through six. But now we have come to the top five Sith Lords. So, without further ado, uh, let's get into it with number five. Number five, Darth Malgus. Now, Malgus was this dude. If you want to talk about raw power, you look no further than Malgus. Malgus was just an all-around, he will smash your shit backwards kind of Sith Lord. He, like Mar, was a true patriot to the Sith and took a major role in heading the assault on Coruscant several thousand years ago in the a siege of Coruscant, destroying the Jedi Temple the first time around, and, you know, pretty much killing several Jedi <laughs> in a very ballsy move, and when I say ballsy move, I mean help, help, basically helping a ship full of Sith crash into the Jedi Temple and sack Coruscant. With Malgus, he was, like, like I said with Mar, Malgus was a true patriot to the Sith, and like Darth Bane and Plagueis, he believed that change was necessary for the Sith. There needed to be some form of change for the Sith. He try, he basically tried to take control of the Sith on Zyost and change it for the better, because like Mar, he didn't really see the whole point of why are we arguing with each other, we're, ba you know, we're the Sith. We are, you know, united to kill the Jedi. That's how we should do things. You know, not these petty squabbles, not, you know, this total xenophobia right here. We need to unite as a species and just beat the shit out of the Jedi and rule the galaxy. And, yeah, even though he didn't really, you know, he didn't care much for, you know, what the Dark Council mostly said, he did see... He did, ba he did do their will, and no one opposed him. No one, even on the Dark Council, was like, You're out of line, Malgus! He's like, What you say, bitch? Nothing. Nothing. You cool, man. You cool. <laughs> so that's kind of how it was. Also, I absolutely... I kind of find his and his Twi'lek concubines, uh, Alina's, uh, romance adorable. Yeah, he's one of the few Sith Lords who had a working relation uh, relationship. Very few Sith Lords are capable of that. And yeah, it was with a Twi'lek uh, prostitute, basically. But Alina was badass. She was <laughs> she killed, not for the Sith or, or for the Sith Empire, she killed in his, in uh, Malgus's name. And she was the only person to ever be allowed to call uh, Malgus by his real name, Veridin. She was the only person ever permitted to say it. If anyone else said Veridin, he'd kill him with his bare hands. But make no mistake, Mal uh, he, and yeah, it was kind of depressing that he had to kill her so he ha so he could move on with his plans. But he was very remote, remorseful for that. But having said that, Malgus, like I, like I said previous, was a powerhouse. Even taking a rocket to the face and scarring his, you know, more or less, he has to wear a re that respirator now. He it didn't slow him down. It didn't slow him down in the least. And he even t went to the, so far as to proclaim himself as the as the Sith Emperor, the new Sith Emperor. Excuse me. But yeah, May it, Malgus was a it, had he had his plan succeeded the way they should have. We could have seen a totally different Sith Empire, an empire that was totally united. Think Bane's rule of two, but more you know close knit, like a dark version of the uh, the dark version of that, and on a great well dark version of the Jedi Order, and on a grand scale. Like I said, Malgus didn't put up with anyone's shit. He wanted to destroy the Jedi. He was a he was a Sith patriot. Unfortunately, his plans didn't go so well, and it led to his death. But then again. His body was never found, so... Hmm. I mean, I, I'm pretty sure he's dead by now, but... Who knows, maybe he'll show up in a DLC for Knights of the Old Republic. Who can say? So, anyway, at number five, Malgus. 
Number four. Darth Vader. What can I say, guys, really? What, what can I say about Darth Vader that isn't already known to everybody else? It's it's Darth frickin' Vader. The <laughs> Probably the, the, like, the most... Not, I wouldn't say infamous. No, the best known thing out of Star Wars. When you think Star Wars, what's the first thing that goes to your mind? Did you say Vader? Did you think Vader? Right out, right out the gate. You instantly think Vader or something in the Empire. But it's, yeah, Va it's so, I always found it interesting, and I think I've said this before, but I've always found it fascinating that of all the things in Star Wars, the mascot for Star Wars is the biggest, is the, probably the biggest villain in the trilogy. It's the villain, it's not the hero. It's not like when you think, like, a Marvel movie, like, something, uh, something from Marvel, you don't think, like, Doctor Doom right out the gate, you think Spider-Man or something like that. But when you think Star Wars your mind usually drifts to Vader, and it's so interesting that the biggest villain that has killed people on screen is the mascot of Star Wars. But enough about that. But like I said, what can I say about Vader that hasn't been said already? The dude is a, an amazing character. He is a tortured soul. He is a... just... <laughs> just aesthetically, he looks amazing, and he can back up all that power, and of course, the father of the man, of the person who uh, would go on to be the last Jedi. It's kind of a moot point, really, to talk about Vader, honestly. But yeah, you, <laughs> he was going to be on this list. But I'm pretty, uh, um, yes, he, he's not in like he's not number one. And I really thought I really had to think hard about this. But there were three other characters you probably knew who num again. You guys probably know who number one is because I've talked about him so much. Um, but yeah, he as like I said, this is just my personal uh, how I like these characters. And honestly, Vader could have gone a little higher, but uh, the other two characters in between him and my number one, I just felt like man, I just like uh, um, I like these characters a little more. But yeah, um, Vader regardless deserved to be on the top five because well, again, he's probably one of the most amazing characters in Star Wars. He is, he is Star Wars, let's face it. But yeah, it, it, I know I'm kind of rambling on about how awesome Vader is, but I don't, think, I don't think I can say anything at this point that hasn't been said already. So yeah, Darth Vader at number four. Number three, Darth Bane. Again, did you not expect him to be on this list? But yeah, let's... <laughs> I, don't, I didn't mean that as an insult, guys. I just like... Yeah, Darth Bane ha was going to be on this list. This is a guy who, more or less, without him, there would be no Sith. Because you see, as we all know, the Sith Empire was dying from within because, at this point, the apprentices were all kind of killing each other and killing... The Sith were basically dying from within because everyone wanted to be a Sith, a Sith Lord, and apprentices would, turn, would, get on, uh, would just gang up on their master, kill him, and then kill each other. So, Bane saw that the Sith had to survive or they're going to die with, from within. So what did he do? He just wiped out all the Sith and became the last one until he took Xena as his apprentice. And how did he do that? With a frickin' thought bomb. Now, with Bane, this dude was raw power. He was a monster when it came to dueling, but his mind was the better weapon than... Yes, he was very adept in the Force, but he, he was brilliant. This guy was always like three steps ahead of everyone. He knew that w there can you know that Sith had to survive, but there couldn't be a you know a huge amount of them. There had to be a sacrifice and he was the only one who had the balls enough to say, "All right, this is what we're going to do now and this is how it's going to be." And yeah, he made it as uh, Bane's himself said in the Star Wars Clone Wars animated series, I created a system that was so resilient, I'm now, st you know, you had to come here. Just think about that. You know, he was, as, as, uh, as Bane's quote-unquote spirits talking to Yoda, he's more or less like, yeah, I've made a system that is going to outlast the Jedi for a foreseeable long amount of time. Granted, that's probably gone now because what happened in Return of the Jedi, but who knows? Maybe there may be more Sith, and maybe someone will become a true Sith. Again, who no only time will tell. But yeah, 
Again, Bane, like Vader, what more can I say about Bane that has been said already? This was a brilliant character, a brilliant strategist, and a devastating fighter, and the one who saved the Sith from itself. So, again, what more can I say about Darth Bane? Number two. Darth Plagueis. Now, with Darth Plagueis, without him... A lot of everything you saw in the, in the Star Wars saga on a whole wouldn't have happened had he not taken certain steps to execute the grand plan. Granted, Palpatine did do, uh, do the final blow, but it was Plagueis who set everything up. Hell, if Plagueis didn't find Palpatine, we wouldn't even have a Star Wars trilogy, or Star Wars universe on a whole. Everything would go about its business, and uh, yeah... So with Plagueis, he was, you know, he's the one who ordered the Camino, who manipulated Palpatine, trained him as his apprentice, and taught him almost everything he knew. He also was the one who went to Camino to register for the clone army. He also was the one who kind of put the seeds of of uh, of betrayal in Dooku. And, let's not forget that he was also the one who more or less set up the Trade Federation to be the big, um... Uh, to be the big crux to Naboo, thus causing the first cracks in the in the Senate, thus leading to the Clone Wars. So this dude, again, had it not been for what he did to the <laughs> basically the Star Wars universe on a whole, there wouldn't exactly be a major conflict. And that was the thing with with Plagueis was that he believed that um, your uh, words were more dangerous than a lightsaber. Oh, don't get me wrong, Plagueis was definitely an incredibly powerful uh, Sith Lord, as well as he was a excellent lightsaber duelist, but he believed in a different route to fighting. He, ha he almost had like a dark version of... The he basically had the same idea as the Jedi, is that there's alternatives to fighting. And But however, when fighting did arrive, he was more than willing to throw down. And that was the thing with Play, and let's and also Plagueis was kind of like a, a combination of Lex Luthor and Mister Sinister. This dude had money to throw around everywhere, and he was obsessed with finding the mysteries of the Force and learning, you know, the secrets of immortality. This was his ultimate goal. However, you know, he put a li he also believed in changing the Sith Order, much like how Bane did. The ru you know the rule of two. He didn't really believe in it and decided to make a new version called the Sathari. Fortunately, it didn't really go that well when uh, his mas you know, when his student betrayed him just when Palpatine had just become uh, chan Supreme Chancellor of the Galactic Senate and everything for Plagueis went downhill. So, in terms of importance, he was, you know, this guy is incredibly high at it. And, you know, he was devious, he, is cal he was calculating, it's just that you know, sit, you know, Sith and trust aren't exactly two words that go uh, that go quite well together. So in the end, it kind of <laughs> Sidious led to his own downfall, you could say. So yeah. Anyway, let's move on to number one. You know who it is, Darth Sidious. Yes, like I've said before, Darth Sidious is my, not only my favorite Sith Lord, but also probably my favorite Star Wars character. This, If you want to look up the word Puppet Master in the dictionary, chances are you're going to see a picture of this guy <laughs> right next to him. Palpatine was the... it was, and it, you know, is and always will be kind of like that, that quintessential Sith Lord you think about, aside from Darth Vader. Those two were, are the two characters. When you think villains in Star Wars, it's usually those two. Palpatine was devious. He was powerful in both the political and uh, force sense. This was a guy who, like Plagueis, let his words be more dangerous. But trust me, when he threw down, he could throw down. Holding his own against his pro former apprentice Maul and Savage Opress, as well as even Master Yoda, this guy was, as as uh, it's been stated, he is the most powerful. He was the most powerful Sith Lord before the end of the Rule of Two and apparent the supposed destruction of the Sith. Granted, he, you know, he never really attained the the power Nihilus had, but definitely he was probably the most powerful Sith in the current, you know among the recent line of uh, recent group of the Sith. 
But with Sidious, this guy, you know, again, without him, there would be no Star Wars. And this, he was also the one who more or less manipulated everyone from Count Dooku to Maul, you know, to Maul, to Dooku, to even, of course, Anakin. And he was the one who executed the grand plan of the Sith and destroyed the Jedi Order. Had it not been for his own arrogance, the Sith Empire may have, his own version of the Sith Empire may have continued on. He, you know, Palpatine was conniving. He was uh, manipulative. The, like I said, this dude is the textbook puppet master. He was beyond... And, you know, he more or less caught the Jedi unawares and left them all reeling in pain at the end, you know. Of course, with, the, uh, with Order 66, everything fell into perfect place towards the, you know, towards the end of everything, he left everyone in, in ruins. So what more can I say about Darth Sidious that hasn't been said already? And if you want, uh, you want to know more about my thoughts on Darth Sidious and why I love him so much, just go check out the uh, Legends of Evil spotlight I did on him. But anyway, <laughs> yeah, what more can I say about Darth Sidious that I haven't said, uh, said enough as it is? But yeah, that is pretty much my top ten favorite Sith Lords list. Once again, if you think a, a character should have been higher or lower on the list, or not at all, or should have been on the list, that's totally fine. No ill will against you. Uh, this is just my personal favorite. I'm not saying this should be the list, end-all, be-all list. I'm just saying these are just my personal favorites among the uh, the Sith. And trust me, this list was kind of hard, but I really, I and I really had to think about this. Like I'm try, I'm still trying to think who are my, you know, who are going to be on my top ten favorite Jedi list. But anyway, uh, you guys tell me, what did you all think about this list, and what are your top ten favorite Sith Lords? Just comment below, let me know, and once again, hope you all enjoyed this, and I will see you guys later.